morning. I guess I should say God morning because if it's not a God morning, Amen. but it is a God morning and we are delighted at South Central Church of Christ. Christ, and it is Christ who's awakened us for this glorious day that we might worship God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we have come with that goal in mind to encourage one another, strengthen one another. We want to join you uh, uh, in And for those who are in the building, we're going to join with social distancing, but we are not as socially distanced as we would have been if we had stayed at home or with some other place. So it's good to have the six feet, but to be able to see those faces and to be able to share with one another, hear each other's voice. So it is something about the assembling of the saints. And I want to be careful when I say that because I mean every word that I say, but I realize that some people are still not prepared to come and to, to be uh, uh, among the saints, well, you are there where you are. And so wherever you are, let us praise God together. Let us do what God has sent us to do and to be who he created us to be. And we're going to get right into this morning's message. Uh, first, by having our uh, prayer, our scripture and prayer, and then we're going to do communion. And we don't want to just, just go past all of that. But we're going to do those things in spirit and in truth. And we just look forward to each of us having a powerful opportunity to share with each other and to encourage one another. God bless you. Welcome to South Central Church of Christ here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Our scripture this morning is going to come from uh, Matthew 24, verses 30 and 31. Matthew 24, verses 30 and 31. And I'm going to say it's a pleasure to be here with you all virtually and on site. Amen. 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 Once again, Matthew 24, verses 30 and 31. And then, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and glory. And he shall end, he shall send his angels with the sound of of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Once again, I've read Matthew 24, verses 30 and 31. Pray with me. Father God, we thank you always for this day that we have on this earth. We have another day to live and glorify you. We thank you always for loving us the way you do. And we pray, Father, that everyone who will hear this message today will be blessed beyond measure. We thank you in Christ's holy name. Amen. Good morning. Communion. Our strips is 1 Corinthians 11, beginning at verse 23. Under inspiration of the Holy Spirit, Paul said, For I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray for the bread. Holy, merciful Father, Lord God, we know that we are loved by you and our Savior. We know, Lord God, that we have 
been blessed to be here to commune with one another. And Lord God, when we partake of this bread, which represents the body of Christ, we do so in the remembrance of Christ. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Eat this bread and drink this cup. You proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. Let us pray for the cup. Lord God, we just thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your son, our Savior, Lord God, for his compassion and his love and his sure faith, Lord God. His willing, Lord God, to shed his precious blood, Lord God, that we may be reconciled back to you. Lord, whenever we partake of this cup that represents the blood of Jesus, we do so in remembrance of Christ. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Beloved, I hope and pray that you had a powerful and wonderful time of fellowship uh, with your family and uh, with other friends, and perhaps you are doing it by uh, technology. I uh, hope that you at least call in sometime, and uh, maybe some of you get forced to write a letter, uh, use the snail mail, do something uh, to reach out to somebody somewhere, and uh, remembering that God said it is not good to be alone. One of the concerns that we have in our culture and in our country, even around the world, about getting back is not just about the financial piece, but also about the psychological, emotional needs that people have. So while you're out and about traveling around town, out of state, and going all of the places that you're actually going, we want to remind you to keep yourself and use wisdom, uh, keep your supply of masks with you, keep your san uh, sanitizers with you, and if you ever return to the to the assembly of the saints, the same God out there will protect you here as well. But until you make up your mind to assemble with the saints, we want you to be healthy, and we want you to make sure you take care of yourself, and make sure you're praising God in everything that you do, and everything that you become. And I'm hoping, and, and I know you're continuing to pray for the church. However uh, she assembles, or however she does not assemble, she still has not changed as being God's community. Well, the Lord God has spoken to his people, and he speaks through his word to his people to encourage us to stay focused more like the living Christ. I began a series of uh, on, on the, on the uh, topic, uh, when uh, you see Jesus, mm -hmm. the return of Jesus, and the topic is so fulfilling that I started looking back over some of my PowerPoints and prior to PowerPoint when I did notes, and, and, and I just never saw where I have done actually a series on the return of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I will talk about it, but to do that series, so... Once I started saying that I want to do a three-part series, it started to open up, and it's like, wow, we could do a 30-part mm -hmm. uh, series on the coming of Christ. It's so loaded. And so this morning, though, we want to, just to remind you in the midst of ongoing turmoil, 
You and I are living in times that we've never lived in before. Now that would be the situation if we did not have COVID, if we did not have strikes uh, in, in sports, not strikes, but the delay in sports and, 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 and the issues that we're actually having. Every day would be different, but there is a time that causes people to be fearful, uh, to be wise, but I'm not sure, and only you would know, are you living more in fear than in wisdom? Mm -hmm. And in all of this, we don't know what the outcome is going to be. I just know personally that the Lord Jesus Christ is alive and he protects his people and that, that no matter what I encounter, mm -hmm. that I'm counting on Jesus, mm -hmm. the Christ. So no matter whether I stay in one room the rest of my life, whether I go out among the saints, the Lord Jesus is going to take me through. Mm -hmm. and, I, I, and I'm hoping that with all of the uncertainty that is happening, that the one certainty that you will have is the coming of Christ. Mm -hmm. And I want to take you to today to the book of Matthew. And I'm going to ask you to join me in the book of Matthew, chapters 24. For those of you who have already received the flyer, you know which direction we are going. But in this one chapter, it's almost impossible to teach it in one session because it is so much and it is an incredible teaching of the Lord Jesus. Everything that Jesus teaches is profound. Mm -hmm. But some things you have to know history and you have to understand where he's coming from. Mm -hmm. So in order to get the text to you today in its context though, I'm going to have to give you snippets mm -hmm. so that you'll understand where we are coming from. So in Matthew 24, in starting in verse 1, Jesus left the temple and was walking away when his disciples came up to him to call attention uh, to its buildings. Doesn't seem like as much in that particular passage. Unless you know what has happened in chapter 23. Mm -hmm. In chapter 23, Jesus has faced head up the Pharisees, the Sadducees, mm -hmm. the religious order of the day. And Jesus is coming to bring us truth and to seek and save what's lost. His number one barrier to teaching the people was the religious order of the day. It really was not the Roman government. It was not the atheists. It's not those who were lost in sin. They were already lost. Mm -hmm. But when he came, he ran headlong mm -hmm. into this barrier called the Pharisees and, and the Sadducees and, and the Zealots and all of those who had their religious beliefs mm -hmm. and practices. And they had captured the mind of the people. They had imprisoned the people. So that when Jesus comes to set the captives free, they are not being set free just from the worldliness and Satan's sin. Also what had happened to those who were religiously captive. Many of you are that way today. You are unable to function. You are unable to worship in a public setting because somebody somewhere said something that's not in the text and you believed it and today you are bound and and it's so hard on you because something inside you is always stirring up. But what you were said, or what you were taught rather, keeps you bound. So you understand in many ways what it actually means to have a person or person or a system to stop you from being free. Mm -hmm. Jesus came. He's teaching the people throughout the countryside. He's teaching them in the synagogue. And he's telling them what God had originally planned. He's telling them that you are somebody, you're somebody unique, and you are somebody that God sent me to redeem. I came seeking to save the lost. We're created in the image of God. There is no one who is better than another person. We have different roles. But Jesus says, I have come to teach you the truth. This is how you function. Sin is not how you function best. Mm -hmm. You got to deal with it because you're in the flesh and you're on this earth. 
But let me show you a better way. Let me show the way you were created. Let me show you the higher calling. Let me show you how it means and what it means to be born again, to be born of the Spirit, to be born of water and the Spirit, the Spirit, and be able to expand your life to be free. The Pharisees and Sadducees, the religious order of the day, not only had their, the, the, the law of Moses, but they had added, what I'm told, over 600 other laws and traditions. So that was the written law, and then there was the law that was verbal. And people were being held accountable equally for the verbal law, the same way it was the written law. The verbal law was of man. The written law was of God. And often again, you and I have to encounter that. So you have to imagine that the system that's set in place. Everybody is saying, if you want to honor God, you have to be a part of this system. So in Matthew chapter 23, Jesus takes on the Pharisees and he goes after them without mercy. The only group that he deals with, the way he deals with, is the religious order of the day. He never te teaches the woman called an adultery. He never teaches the, uh, the, the guy who is, is out of his mind while he, he's in a graveyard. No matter who it is, he does not do what he's doing to this group of people. And he gives them what's called the seven woes. Now, let me, I'm going to go there quickly in chapter 23 so that I can put this in a context. When Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. That's the teacher's seat. So you must obey them and do everything they tell you, but do not do what they do. For they do not practice what they preach. Mm -hmm. They tie up heavy loads and put them on men's shoulders. Mm -hmm. But they themselves are not willing mm -hmm. to lift a finger to move them. Mm -hmm. Everything they do is done to be seen by men. And then you go to verse 13. He says, Woe to you teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites, Verse 15, woe to you teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. 16, woe to you blind guides. 17, you blind fools. And verse 19, you blind men. And he goes on at, at verse 23, uh, woe to you teachers of the law, hypocrites. So he is going to the very gut and the heart of religiosity. People saying one thing and living another way. And on top of that, having the power and the influence to and rather than saving them, also imprisoning them for their benefit. They are teaching all of these things, putting all of these heavy burdens on people. It's telling that they were telling them that whatever you committed to God, you can't, you can't feed your family with it. You can't give it to, 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 to your mother and father. If you made a commitment to God, no matter what, you got to take that money and bring it to us. Mm -hmm. If they don't get their bills paid, if they are sick, if they start death, no. You said you were going to bring us this. Bring it. Mm -hmm. This is the kind of thing that Jesus was dealing with. So when we get to chapter 24, and it says, Jesus left the temple. Uh, and he departed, he went out and departed from the temple. The real story behind this is, is that you and I won't pick this up from these words in English. But Jesus was leaving with no intentions of returning to the temple. He's walking to his destiny. His disciples know that after he's gone through this battle, he cannot be left by himself. So what they want to do is encourage him and strengthen him. Mm -hmm. So they said, look at all of these buildings. Mm -hmm. Now the temple had taken 80 years to be built. It was a magnificent temple. The first temple had been destroyed. This is the rebuilding of the temple. Mm -hmm. And it had taken 80 years working with thousands of people working around the clock. That's how magnificent it was. They had so much gold on it, 
that it would look like it would shine. And off a distance, you'd be just blind that there was so much gold. Mm -hmm. The Jesus says that, well, let me, let me, let me keep describing this thing. Mm -hmm. It is so powerful mm -hmm. and so big mm -hmm. that the stones were as large as this auditorium. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's how big it was. And so in, in, in the descriptions that we get, you and I can't even envision what this temple looked like. Mm -hmm. And so the disciple says, look at these buildings. Mm -hmm. It's not only the temple, but the surrounding supporting building. But Jesus, doing what Jesus does, he's just gone after the religious system. Mm -hmm. and then he says to them, do you see all of these things? Jesus will mess with your head. He said, do you see all of these what? Things. I'll tell you the truth, not one stone will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. As large, as magnificent as these man-made things. How many of us have a problem getting to see Jesus and understanding because we're always pointing him to things? They said, Jesus, look at these things. He said, I, I know those things. <laughs> but do you understand that they're just things? Mm -hmm. They are temporary. Mm -hmm. Things are about to happen, and all those things you see will, will be gone. Let me, let me, I'm getting ahead of myself. He said, not every stone will be, will, will, will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, when will this happen? What will be the sign of your coming and of the end of age? Three questions. Mm -hmm. Jesus answered. <laughs> oh my goodness. What's the sign? Mm -hmm. Watch out mm -hmm. that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name claiming I am the Christ and will deceive many. You will hear of wars, rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alone. Oh my goodness. He says, see to it that no one deceives you. When you stand on the truth, you have to stand on the truth. It seems to be, not seems to be, it's emerging very clearly that God is keep telling us every week when we start talking about one thing, he starts bringing something back up. Mm -hmm. Be on the guard of his being deceived. Mm -hmm. That means you're on the right track, you know the truth, but Satan is trying to sidetrack you. Mm -hmm. He says, watch out, be careful, examine what's coming your way, because it's designed to throw you off. He said you'll hear of wars, you'll hear of truth, but then you'll hear of rumors of wars. Rumors will throw you. You ever felt good about a situation? Felt good about the church and somebody said something? And several of you were involved and you start talking among yourself, none of you knew it was true. But it became true because somebody brought it to you, mm. sidetracked it, mm. you accepted it, mm. and the next thing you know, you're not even functioning in the church because of a rumor. Mm. Jesus said, watch out. Mm. Be very, very careful because you will be deceived. Mm -hmm. Even in my name. And then he says, but see to it that you're not alone. Beloved, don't get upset Amen. and don't get bothered. Mm -hmm. Don't run out of the church because of a rumor. Mm -hmm. Don't stop doing what God called you to do because of a rumor. Amen. Don't get despair and sit down on Christ because of something you heard. Mm -hmm. He says, don't get alarmed. You will hear them, but don't be deceived by it. Mm -hmm. If you already know the truth, Stick with the truth. Amen. And then he says, such things must happen. 
But the end, even before the end comes, you're going to have rumors. You're going to have deception. He said that's how it is. He's going to stop doing what he's done. He has to find people to work through to try to destroy God's divine kingdom. And then he says nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes. And then he says the strangest things. Oh my goodness. All of these are the beginnings of birth pain. Mm. Something new is getting ready to happen. Mm. All of this has to happen. Mm. But God is bringing something else to the earth. Mm. And then he says to them, you will be handed over to be persecuted, put to death, be hated by all nations because of me. And at that time, many will turn away from the faith and betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. Oh, this, this, he said this national disaster, the destruction of Jerusalem is about to happen. But he says that's going to be wars and rumors of war. These are not the things that the church will do. They are outside. He said, but because of this, that's going to have an internal impact. Mm -hmm. The illustration would be, mm -hmm. if you are out on a lake mm -hmm. and it becomes stormy mm -hmm. and the boat is rocking, mm -hmm. you'll be all right mm -hmm. as long as the water does not get in the boat. Mm -hmm. You don't have a problem mm -hmm. until the water does what? Gets into the boat. Mm -hmm. When the sea gets into the church, mm -hmm. That's when she starts to sink. Mm. So he says you're going to have. But the problem comes when it becomes. If Satan that is destructive mm. gets into the church. We're going to have a big problem. Mm. Mm. And so he uses this analogy to tell us this. Because he says the love then of people will do what? Grow cold. Well how does it grow cold? Mm. He says first of all. They will betray and hate each other. Hate doesn't mean the opposite of love. It's the word grow. Mm -hmm. Many people, not at South Central, <laughs> but they're never going to return to church because they didn't love the people to start with. Mm -hmm. They came out of tradition. Mm -hmm. And now they have found they can stay in their kitchen, get the same traditional <laughs> message, not have to deal with people. And the people they did not love, they still don't love them. Have no desire to be a part of them. They say they don't want to go to heaven where all they just don't want to go to heaven with them. Mm -hmm. And so that's the deceit. That's the real deceit. Because the greatest, the greatest absolute mark of Christians is that we will love one another. Mm -hmm. So dear friends, let us love one another. And then it goes on to say, for God is love. But he's saying, the love of the world, when it gets into the church, causes us then to get cold. Mm -hmm. That we become against mm -hmm. each other. Mm -hmm. Jesus don't play. Mm -hmm. Jesus does not joke. Mm -hmm. He tells us the real truth of how life is. So he says, when you see this coming, the singing will be cold. The giving will be cold. The communion will be cold. The ministries will be cold. Mm -hmm. Cold. Mm. Whatever you do, mm. Mm. but those mm. who reject deceit, mm. who don't hate each other, who don't turn on each other, mm. who don't walk past each other without speaking mm. and hold on to things in the past, he says, those who do what? Stand firm to the end mm. will be saved. Mm. Are you going to stand firm to the end? If we're going to stand firm, we have to not allow to see. We can't find out, brothers and sisters. We are God's people. Amen. I've heard people say, since I've been in the church, we're the Lord's church. We're the only one going to heaven and then hate folk. <laughs> how, how, how crazy is that? How ungodly is that? Mm. How satanic is that? Mm. You can't say that I'm in the everybody in there. <laughs> so then God said, don't allow that to happen. But I mean, that's a seat. Mm. 
Satan has tricked you into religiosity. But those who stand firm to the end will be saved. Those who've chosen to love God, mm -hmm. to love his people, mm -hmm. to support the church, mm -hmm. those are the people who are doing what? Standing firm. Mm -hmm. Loving everybody is not easy. Mm -hmm. But you have to make a decision that that's what God wants. So I'm going to give the very best that I have. No one loves everybody. No one is capable of doing it. But we're certainly capable of doing more than what we do. Mm -hmm. And we're capable of wanting to love others. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's how we stand firm. What? To the end. And listen to what he says. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations and then the end will come. Listen. He said to them, you're going to have tribulation. Mm -hmm. Destruction is going to come. The temple is going to fall. But if you love each other, mm -hmm. a new thing is going to happen. The Amen. temple will fall, but to the church. Amen. He just has to have people who are committed and are faithful. Amen. You stay. Don't let anybody take you away. Amen. So that God will send out the gospel, the good news. And then he tells them more and more signs of what they're going to have to face. Now that's one part. The rest of this I'm skipping over. Because they ask two questions. When is Jesus coming? It's about the destruction of Jerusalem. Titus, the emperor, came against the temple in Jerusalem. And destroyed. I was telling you about it was so wonderful that Titus wanted to save the temple. As the eighth wonder of the world, the soldiers weren't happy. They were so hungry to destroy all of Jerusalem that they could not imagine that if all the fighting they had done, everything they had done in that temple will start. So somebody started a fire, burned the temple down, but God said it had to be destroyed anyway, right? Mm -hmm. So whoever the mechanism, we don't know. But they melted the gold outside of the bricks, captured the gold, plowed the temple and Jerusalem under. Even today, we don't know exactly where the original temple was because God did exactly what he said he was going to do. And then when he did that, he gives them more and more details. And then in, we're still in chapter uh, 24 and verse 23. At that time, if anyone says to you, look, here's the Christ, there he is, do not believe it. For false Christ and false prophets will appear and perform great miracles to deceive even the elect, if that was possible. See, I'm telling you ahead of time. Do you see this keeps popping up? You see it? It's all throughout the word of God. If you don't get to heaven, it's because you were deceived. It wasn't because he didn't bring you the truth. It's just you let somebody take the truth away from you. Deceit does not come and say, I'm deceit. Mm -hmm. It says, I'm the truth. Mm -hmm. It's just different than the truth. Mm -hmm. Have you ever gone somewhere and find out later on that what you signed in a contract, it, mm -hmm. <laughs> that was some stuff in there that you didn't know, right? Mm -hmm. And they just hand you that paperwork. Mm -hmm. 14 pages, go to sign right here. We just do that. <laughs> just sign, you just sign. You just sign. And find out later on, mm -hmm. when you have a problem, that they anything that you thought ought to be covered. Mm -hmm. They say, well, you signed the contract. <laughs> so then that is it's everywhere. Verse 26, uh, uh, in, in, in verse uh, 20, no, 27. For as lightning that comes from the east is visible, even in the west, it will be the coming of the Son of Man. Wherever there is a carcass, there the vultures will, will gather. Immediately after the stress of those days, the sun will not give us light. The stars will fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. And at that time, the Son of Man will appear in the sky will mourn. They will see the Son of Man coming on the cloud with power and great glory. 
and he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heavens to the other. And then Jesus says, now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see all these things, you know that it is right at your door. I tell you the truth, this generation will certainly not pass until all of these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass. Now, he says, it is so important. Stay with me. No one knows the hour or day, not even the angels in heaven, mm. uh, or son, uh, nor the son, but only the father. No one knows when he's coming back at that time. Mm -hmm. As was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the son of man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, married, and giving in marriage up to the day Noah entered the ark. They knew nothing about what, what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. This is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Noah preached for over 100 years. Built the ark. And he said, they didn't pay any attention. They didn't know what was coming. I, I cannot teach this lesson without at least going to Genesis 6 real quick. I mean, if you have in your Bibles, you... You, you, you will miss this entire lesson if you miss what Jesus is saying. He says the way that things were happening on Noah's day is the way it's going to be happening when he comes again. And when I was studying this, it was like, wow, look at what God is saying here. In Genesis chapter 6, are you there? If you're there, and, and, and I can see right through this camera, raise your hand. Let's see, 30, 60, 80 of them. Okay. Now, when men began to increase in number on the earth, and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful, and they married any of them they chose. Then the Lord said, my spirit will not continue anymore. His days will be 120 years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterward. When the sons of God went to the daughters of men and, they, and they had children by them, they were the heroes of old men, the men of renown. Of old men. The Lord saw how great man's wickedness on the earth had become and that every inclination of his heart and every evil of that time was only on evil. The Lord was grieved. That he had made man on the earth and his heart was filled with pain. So the Lord said, I will wipe mankind whom I created from the face of this earth. Men and animals, creatures that move along the ground, birds of the air. For I'm grieved that I made them. But Noah, Noash in the Hebrew, found favor in the eyes of the Lord. You know, it doesn't matter who favors you if it's not the eyes of the Lord. Amen. And this judgment on them came from God. Mm -hmm. So the judgment that God states is the only judgment that counts. Mm -hmm. But the judge is the judge. <laughs> now, can we make this come a little bit more alive? Mm -hmm. Stay with me here. How did the people of Noah's day become the way they became? What happened to them? They came complacent. What was the? What, how did they become complacent? All right, let's let's. We don't have time to, to get into it, but I want to. Let me take you there. Look back one chapter. This is the in, in, in Genesis chapter. This is the uh, written account of Adam's line. Verse three: When Adam had lived one hundred and thirty years. He had his son in his own likeness, in his own image. He named him Seth. After Seth born, Adam lived 800 years. Altogether, Adam lived 930 years. Seth lived 912 years. Enosh lived 905 years. 
Kenan lived 910 years. Uh, Mahalalah li uh, 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 lived 895 years. Jared lived 965 years. These folk were having babies when they had lived 400 years, mm -hmm. 500 years, mm -hmm. 600 years. I'm telling you, mm -hmm. they had money. They had prosperity. And when they got tired of their wives, they went and married somebody else. Mm -hmm. That's what the Bible said. They were married other folk. Mm -hmm. They been with somebody 300 years. They said, I had enough of you. <laughs> and they were glad, hug glad and the wife. You, I mean, no matter how much you love them after 300 years, it's time to go. You got to go. And the other women and men were looking good. See, they were still young. They were powerful. So after 300 years, you already had 740 kids. So now you start all over again. Man, they had it going on. They weren't worried about the Lord coming back. Man, if I'm going to live 900 years, what do I care about the Lord coming back? They were doing what they wanted to do. They had forgotten all about God. And so Jesus says, it's going to be the same way it was in the days of Noah. People think, I've got it made. I got my 401k. I got money in the bank. I got children and grandchildren. I can travel here or there. I can do basically what I want to do. And I don't care too much about when God is coming because I don't believe I'm going to die anyway. Even though we know that we don't have all of those years, we got enough that we don't care. I promise you you don't care. Because if I were to ask you, what changes would you make if you knew you were going to die in the morning? And if you could take the question seriously, what changes would you make? And if you have to make one, it means you ain't serious at this point. Because you might die tonight. You might die this afternoon. And that's what Jesus is trying to say to them. All of the world is trying to deceive you. I have blessed you so much that you're going to keep right on doing what you're doing. Mm. Jesus said, when I come, I'm going to catch him just like that. Mm. Noah preached for 120 years. And nobody was saved other than who Jesus said they would, who, who God the Father said they would. Mm -hmm. And there were billions of people on the face of the earth. Mm. Nobody repented. So Jesus says, I'm going to give you a clue. Mm -hmm. Same way. Mm -hmm. Is it any different? Tell the truth. Okay, we say we're not dealing, we're not living 800 years, but we're marrying and divorcing and doing all the other stuff just like everybody else will do. <laughs> we're taking care of what's important to us. Mm -hmm. We disregard what God says. Mm -hmm. And after a while, if you keep on doing it, the more you disregard God. Now, there are people who, he said, be faithful. They're not perfect. They struggle. Mm -hmm. But they agree that God is right. Mm -hmm. And they're God's faithful servant. Mm -hmm. But these people here, they are not that way. Mm -hmm. They just had it made. Mm -hmm. They just didn't care. They had moved away from the Lord. When you've been around six, seven, eight hundred years, after a while, you either locked in with the Lord or you on your own. <laughs> How about us? Because he says it's going to be the same way. And then he says in verse uh, 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 42 of chapter 24 of Matthew. Therefore keep watch because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you must also be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you are not expecting him. But you see, we're not like that. We're God's faithful servants. The warning is to those who are drifting. Those who are slipping away. Those who are allowing themselves to be deceived. And they're not saying deceive me. They're just not staying on course. They're not staying in the word of God. Let's finish this up in Jude. If you have the book of Jude in your, in your, in your text, we don't go to Jude that often. But 
Go to the book of Jude. It's the last book before Revelation. See what the Lord says there. Jude. Starting in verse, uh, uh, I'm right in the middle of, of, of a statement, but I'm going to start in verse 14. Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesies about these men. And he's talking about the men who were always like the men at the time of Noah. They had no conscience. They were doing everything they wanted to do. They blasphemed holy things. They called themselves. They did everything that could be done. And he says, in the seventh from Adam prophesied about these men. The Lord is coming with thousands upon thousands of his holy ones to judge everyone and to convict all the ungodly of the ungodly acts they've done in the ungodly way and all of the harsh words ungodly sinners have spoken against them. These men are grumblers, fault finders, they follow their own evil desires. They boast about themselves and flatter others for their own advantage. You see the deceit. In some ways they are bold, but in other ways they are very, very deceitful. They grumble. Why, why, why brother so-and-so did this? Why, why does the leadership do that? What is that all about? They're not looking for resolution, mm -hmm. but to put doubt into you. Mm -hmm. They fault finders. If you ask them, well, what is your solution? They don't have one. Mm -hmm. They just know that what you're doing is wrong. Mm -hmm. They follow their own evil desires. They boast about themselves and flatter others for their own advantage. They give you a compliment, but it's all about them. Mm -hmm. But, dear friends, Remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ foretold. Mm. They said to you, in the last time there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. Mm. These are men who divide you, who follow mere natural instincts and do not have the spirit. Mm. But you, dear friends, build yourselves up in holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep your up as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Be merciful to those who doubt. Snatch others from the fire and save them. To others show mercy mixed with fear, hating even the clothing stained by corrupted flesh. To him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. Amen. To the only God, our Savior, be glory, mm -hmm. majesty, power, and authority, and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. Listen. Just keeps teaching. The Apostle Paul was teaching that the Lord Jesus is on his way. Mm -hmm. And here that I'm going to demonstrate from my word. And I'm going to demonstrate if I say it true. That I'm going to do what I do church. Mm -hmm. The church that comes out of mm -hmm. the pandemic in, in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And in, and, 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 in, and in this country and around the world will be different. Mm -hmm. There will be people you say, well, what happened to this brother or sister? They're not coming back. Mm -hmm. But every church is like that. Mm -hmm. But you're going to look up and you're going to see people. And you say, well, I welcome. Tight it. And people are going to, God's going to transfer people in to help out everything you need. Mm -hmm. Well, through all of this, we're going to have every, they're already on the way. Amen. Already Amen. on the way. Amen. God says to those Amen. and don't worry about those who don't come back. Love them. Mm -hmm. Don't you ever stop loving your brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. But let them go their way and do what they need to do. Mm -hmm. And if you can go and put your arm around them and, and bring them back eventually, do that. Mm -hmm. But some are not coming back. Mm -hmm. 
Because they were never part of you. Mm. They came, mm. but they were never loving you. Mm. You never really mattered to them. Mm. But for those who know what it means mm. to actually love your brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. for those of you who are staying at home but you are praying, mm -hmm. and you really are asking God to give you the courage mm -hmm. to come to the assembly, mm -hmm. giving you the love to reach out to your brothers and sisters, this will happen when you see the Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. deep inside yourself. Mm -hmm. When you see the Lordship of Jesus and when you know that he's coming for his own and you want to be a part of this. Mm -hmm. And so whatever happens today, the Lord God says, be faithful until the end. Mm -hmm. He has given birth to a new church. Mm -hmm. And he's given birth to a church that is faithful. Mm -hmm. It's not based on how it used to be where everything was fine. And everybody has forgotten him. But a people who are no longer religious, mm. but who are faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ mm. and not afraid of him appearing mm. on his white horse. Amen. But we imagine ourselves riding mm -hmm. with King Jesus. Amen. Ride on, Amen. conquering King Jesus. Amen. I want to go to heaven Amen. in the morning. Amen. So we are faithful. Yes. And we're going to stay faithful until the very end. Beloved, you continue to know that God has a great love for you. It's not over. No matter what turmoil goes on, these are things. This is politics. God is greater. And he said the gates of hell will not prevail against this church. That has never changed. So this day, allow yourself to stand before the other. Rededicate your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, he did not give you a spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. He did not give you a spirit of timidity, mm -hmm. but of power sound mind because that's the gift of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. If you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and you believe that he's already saved you, then tell your neighbor, tell your co-worker, people at church. Mm -hmm. People are asking more than ever before, what church are you in? What, what's going on with you guys? Mm -hmm. We don't have all the gl glitz and glamour and the great technology, but we have Christ Jesus. Amen. And that will be enough. Amen. We may not have the things, but we have he who was, who is, and is yet come. Amen. And those of you who already know the word of God and the will of God, we won't have to push you to do push pay. You'll do it because of the privilege of serving God. Mm -hmm. God bless you, beloved. We pray that you are looking forward to the coming of Christ by the way that you live on this given day as he's doing a new thing, giving birth to a new church. God bless you. Amen. Amen.